اوكي معاكم رافد الدويش اليوم ان شاء الله راح نتكلم في العرض عن الجي اي تراكت راح نناقش 10 اسئله ريليتد للبيبتيكال سر ديزيز الجاسترو ايسوفيشي الجاسترو ايسوفيجال ريفلكس الانفلاماتوري باول ديزيز اند سيليك ديزيز سو ليتس ستارت وذ ذا فيرست كويستشن ا 60 يير اولد بيشنت نون تو هاف ا هارد ديزيز هي از اون اسبرين اند بلافيكس فور ا لونج تايم The patient admitted to you with a history of severe epigastric abdominal pain radiating to the back. Uh, on, exam- on examination, he has generalized tenderness, absent bowel sound. You did x-ray for him and you found air under him diaphragm. So what do you think the diagnosis is? Okay. In order to solve this question, uh, we have to know what is diabetic ulcer disease. Uh, it is a focal defect in the mucosa that penetrates the muscularis mucosal layer and causing scar. Um, the etiology of this disease, it is either uh, due to H. pylori infection, uh, the usage of NSAID, uh, physiological stress-induced ulcer, and put in your, in your mind, it is a physiological one, not a psychiatric uh, stress. Also, zollinger ilson syndrome or idiopathic. There is uh, another um, risk factors that uh, increase uh, the ulcer formation like uh, alcohol, tobacco, and uh, using of uh, corticosteroid and the male gender. Um, as you know that gastritis, it is only an inflammation of the mucosal layer. And if it is left and treated, it will progress to ulcer formation. So uh, aspirin is one of the drugs that causing gastritis and um, if it is not treated, it will lead to peptic ulcer disease. And I highlighted here because it was mentioned in the scenario. What is the, what is the presentation of, uh, of the patient with peptic ulcer disease? He will either have a chronic or a periodic dull burning epigastric pain. How the pain can be البين ممكن uh, it might radiate to the back and relate to the meal. So um, بالنسبة للrelation with the meal, it is depend on the site of the ulcer. If it is uh, if it is a gastric ulcer, it will uh, it will increase the pain. However, if it is a duodenal pain, uh, the the meal will reduce it. So how you memorize it? G of uh, gastric with the G of greater, and the D of the duodenum with the D of decays. Another uh, symptoms like nausea, uh, hematemesis, and it has a specific uh, uh, appearance. It will, it will be a coffee ground emesis because uh, bleeding, it will mix with the food particles and the acid. Also, melina. The other uh, um, examination finding, during the physical examination, it's normally the patient, uh, he will be normal. However, Uh, he might present with epigastric tenderness. Other complication, or if the peptic ulcer uh, disease is left untreated for a long time, the patient might present with uh, complication, like a bleeding or perforation. And the perforation that what I want to focus uh, now, um, I want to focus about it now because uh, during the examination, if the patient come with a perforated peptic ulcer disease, uh, this will lead to peritonitis. So. When you examine the patient, you will feel the abdomen is rigid and there will be a rebound tenderness and guarding. Also, when you try to, um, when you use the stethoscope, uh, you will not hear any bowel sound because of the uh, peritonitis. Other uh, finding on the XA, you will find air under the diaphragm. Also, uh, other complication that might uh, present um, in peptic ulcer disease like gastric outlet obstruction and pancreatitis. So back to the question, can you answer it now? Okay, excellent. So uh, it is a direct question because uh, the patient um, uh, on examination, he has generalized tenderness, bowel sound is absent. And on X-ray, there is air under the diaphragm. Also, he, is, um, he has the symptoms of uh, peptic ulcer disease and he using aspirin and Blavix uh, for a long time. Okay, moving to the second question. A 40-year-old patient with epigastric pain, nausea, and severe diarrhea, 
He had a vast history of multiple gastric and duodenal ulcer from recurrence despite treatment. After the last visit, the doctor found one of the ulcer near to the duodenum. What investigation will you order? So what do you think? What is the answer here? So in order to, uh, to solve this question, we know the etiology of peptic ulcer disease with uh, presentation. Now we will know the, how we investigate the peptic ulcer disease. The most accurate test is the endoscopy, okay? To rule out what, so to see if the patient has gastric cancer or not. Other tests, if we suspect that uh, the cause of peptic ulcer disease is H. pylori, we can, uh, it has a specific test, either non-invasive one or invasive one. The non-invasive test like urea breath test, serology, and fecal antigen. Um, the urea breath test, it might give you a false negative. Uh, the patient BBI, um, they, and we did a urea breath test for the patient, it might give us a false negative result. A serology, it can remain positive after treatment. Okay, sorry. Um, the patient, uh, if we want, if we use the serology, um, it it can remain positive even after treatment. Okay, not like not like the urea breath test, and the fecal antigen, uh, it it is rarely used in clinical practice. And which one of these tests we can use it for uh, follow up? They mainly recommend uh, to use urea breath test or uh, fecal antigen. However, the fecal antigen, it's rarely used in clinical practice, but we will use the urea breath test after uh, fourth mon uh, four months um, of the treatment. يعني أول شيء ننتظر البيشنت بعد ما يخلص التريتمنت أربع شهور نسوي له هذا التست عشان نشوف إذا صار في إيريديكيشن للإتش بايلوري أو نات. لكن السيرولوجي ما نقدر نسويه في الفولو اب لان الانتي باديز راح تضل في الدم لمده يعني تاخذ اشهر وهي باقي في دم الانسان عشان كذا في الفولو اب وي ريكومند تو دو يوريا بريث تيست طيب الانفيسيف تيست لايك الاندوسكوبي وي كان اولسو يوز مايكرو بايولوجي كلتشر هاو ايفر ات از اونلي فور ذا ريسيرش ذا ثيرد ميجرمنت وي كان يوز فاستنج سيروم جاسترين الفاستنج سيروم جاسترين uh, غالبا تكون اليفيتد في الزولنجر في الزولنجر إلسون سندروم اند ان ذا اتروفيك جاسترايتس سو وات از ذا زولنجر إلسون سندروم هو عباره عن تيومر هذا التيومر ذس تيومر ويل بروديوس جاسترين اند از وي نو ذات جاسترين از ستيموليت ذا اسيد سكريشن تو اتس ماكسيمال كاباسيتي So, uh, what is the uh, clinical uh, feature for this um, for patient with uh, with this syndrome? They will have multiple peptic ulcer in unusual site. So, when the doctor did uh, um, an endoscopy for this patient, he will find the ulcer in a makin mo mitaudin alayha yikun fiha al ulcer, either in the esophagus, duodenum, or uh, post bulbar duodenum. Also. حتى لو أعطينا البيشنت تريتمنت هي will not respond uh, to the treatment uh, he might present with the bleeding and perforation are common in this patient and uh, the most presenting feature of this syndrome is diarrhea one third and more of, um, of these patients they have diarrhea and what is the reason of having diarrhea because مثل ما قلنا الأسد سكريشن راح يكون عالي فthis will lead and uh, cause mucosal damage. Another uh, reason, uh, the pancreatic enzyme will not, uh, will not activate in this patient because the um, enzyme, it needs an alkaline medium to, to, to be activated. So uh, this will lead to malabsorption and diarrhea. Another also uh, uh, finding in this patient Because the gastrinoma or this type of a tumor, it is associated with MIN type one, so uh, we will find uh, in this patient uh, hypercalcemia from the hyperparathyroidism. How we diagnose it? The patient will have a fasting serum uh, gastrin ali. We can do CT to stage the disease because it is a tumor. 
uh, nuclear bacteriotype scan to localize uh, the tumor. And how we treat it? First, we will give him a moderate to high dose of PBI to reduce the symptom. بعدها إذا ما كان في متاستسز للديزيز راح نسوي surgical resection. So can you solve the question now? So excellent. The answer is A. Because um, the patient, uh, he has a history of multiple gastric uh, ulcers. Also, he has a severe diarrhea. As we said, it is a characteristic feature of patients with, um, uh, with this syndrome. And um, when the doctor do, uh, did... Um, also, in the last visit, the, the doctor find ulcer near to the jejunum. So there is uh, ulcer in uh, an unusual site. Fi soal hina. What did you say, doctor, about something makes the urea breath test false? Uh, when we uh, give the patient treatment, when we give him the treatment, uh, this uh, urea breath test is going to affect the treatment. فما راح نقدر نعرف بالفولو اب اذا البيشنت صار له فعلا ايراديكيشن يعني ما في اتش بايلوري ولا هذا بفعل الدرج فراح ننتظر بعد ما نخلص الترايل اوف تريتمنت راح ننتظر بعدها بكم شهر ونسوي له اليوريا بريث تيست ننتقل للسؤال الثالث a 50-year-old woman is referred by her GP with a history of epigastric pain, nausea, and uh, hematemesis. She is diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis six months ago, and the doctor prescribed for her and said to reduce her symptoms. What is the management? Okay. Um, we discuss the uh, presentation, the etiology, the investigation. So now we will move to the treatment. Uh, first of all, you have to ask the patient to stop uh, NSAID. إذا كان المريض يحتاج شيء يسوي له control للبين, either we reduce the dose of NSAID or replace it with the acetaminophen. Also, we will recommend the patient to stop uh, smoking. We ask him to avoid caffeine, alcohol, and spices to reduce his symptoms. Uh, if we did uh, the H. pylori uh, test and we found that... Um, it is positive, we will start as an uh, initial uh, treatment with the triple therapy, which is the BPI, amoxicillin, and clarithromycin. Uh, if, if the patient is not respond or he has a macro lead uh, resistance, we can go with the quadruple therapy. And they found that the quadruple therapy, um, it will lower the recurrence rate of optic ulcer more than the, the, uh, the triple therapy. Also, if uh, the H. pylori is not the cause, so we will start with the BBI to heal the, un the ulcer, even if the patient is uh, taking NSAID. However, as I said, we will recommend the patient to stop uh, uh, the usage of NSAID. Other medication, مثل histamine antagonist, but it is less effective. طيب. If the patient present with the bleeding, يعني هو جانا the complication, كان مع بتك ulcer disease, um, it is left untreated. فجانا مع bleeding. كيف راح نتعامل معه أو إيش الأبروج؟ if we, subs if we suspect bleeding uh, due to peptic ulcer, first of all, we will assess the vitals. مثل ما إحنا نسوي ABC, the airway, the breathing, circulation. راح نقيس the blood pressure, the heart rate, the orthostatic changes. Um, ممكن نسوي resuscitation للبيشنت نعطي كريست تلويد أو بلاد برودكت according to his status بعد بعد الرساتيشن وال والأسسمنت we have to confirm that this bleeding is from the upper GI source okay how we can do that بال nasogastric tube placement وإذا كان في aspiration after the confirmation راح نعطي البيشنت IV BBI for a 72 hours before endoscopy. And then we will give him erythromycin 30 minutes before the endoscopy. And what is the benefit of the erythromycin? هو يعتبر a brokinetic drug. So uh, it will uh, accelerate the gastric uh, empty to have, uh, to have a better visualization, uh, visualization during uh, endoscopy.
طيب بعدها راح نسوي الاندوسكوبي وعلى حسب الفايندينج راح نقسم البيشنت حقينا الى هاي ريسك هاي ريسك اوف ري بليدنج او لو ريسك اوف ري بليدنج كيف نعرف اذا هو تحت الهاي ريسك او اللو ريسك if we found uh, during the endoscopy that our patient has active bleeding or visible vessels or clots or he has a clinical risk factor like he is more than 60 years old uh, he has a comorbidities um, he is hemodynamically unstable راح نستمر على ال IV BBI ممكن نسوي homeostasis by clips or thermal ممكن نعطيك coagulation and epinephrine injection لكن أبيكم تعرفونا أنه we will continue on the IV BBI طيب إذا, ك- إذا في الاندوسكوبي ما كان عنده active bleeding uh, he did not have visible vessels um, the legion was flat pigmented spot or clean base راح نوقف في IV BBI ونعطيه oral BBI تمام طيب بعد الاندوسكوبي we will resume a clear fluid um, we will resume the clear fluid 6 hour uh, after the endoscopy After that, we will uh, search for the cause. We will test for H. pylori. And uh, if there is re-bleeding after the doing of uh, endoscopy, we can uh, uh, repeat the endoscopy with aim of uh, hemostasis. And if all of these are uh, not helpful, we will move to the surgery. So as a quick recap, first, assist the patient, assist his vital signs, resuscitate the patient, confirm that the source of a bleeding is from the upper GI, give him IV PPI 72 hours before endoscopy, give him erythromycin 30 minutes before uh, endoscopy, do the endoscopy, and according to its result, classify your patient into high risk and low risk. If he is under the high risk, continue on IV, uh, IV PPI. If he is under uh, the low risk of free bleeding, Uh, stop the IV and give him oral BBI. Okay, so can you answer the question now? Okay, so this patient, uh, he presents uh, to us with hematemesis. Um, he is present to us with the bleeding. So what is, uh, what we have to do before we, uh, we, give, we, we use endoscopy? We have to give the patient IV BBI for 72 hours. Okay. ما نقدر نختار لا بي ولا سي لأنهم جايبين طاري الأورال وحنا قلنا الأورال لما يكون هو at the low risk حتى إيه إذا كان هو تحت ال تحت الكاتيجوري of the low risk of re bleeding تمام okay moving to the fourth question seventy year old male had a car accident three weeks ago He is on mechanical ventilation in ICU due to intracranial hemorrhage. After a few days, he developed ground uh, coffee vomitus. What is the diagnosis? What do you think? Okay. We have uh, three types of ulcers. One of them is related to the H. pylori, and we discuss how we investigate it, how we can treat uh, the patient with the H. pylori. So what is H. pylori? It is a gram-negative flagellated road. that causing inflammation and infection to the gastric mucosa. طيب يا اما انها تسوي gastritis only non erosive uh, والبيشنت هنا يكون asymptomatic او يسوي لي erosion so the patient will present with the bleeding and if it is uh, progress and develop ulcer it will cause significant clinical problems. لقوا ان 15% من البيشنت راح راح يكون عندهم بيبتيك ulcer disease. النوع الثاني اللي هو انسد انديوست السريشن ات ويل كوز السر باي تو باث واي ايذر دايركت اور ان دايركت الدايركت انه راح يكون في دايركت كونتاكت بين ذا دراج اند ذا جاستريك ميوكوزا اند ويل كوز ايروجن الان دايركت وي نو ذات ذس دراج ات ويل انهبيت ذا ميوكوزا سايكلو اوكسجينيز ات ويل ليد تو ديكريز ذا بروستاجلاندين سينثيسيس سو ذس ويل ريديوس ذا سكريشن اوف ذا بروتكتيف سبستنس لايك ميوكس اند بايكربونيت سو ذس ويل فورم ذا السر طيب ماست انسد السر ار اسيمتوماتيك بس البيشنت ممكن يجيني بكومبليكيشن لكن اغلب السيمتومز اللي هي الهارت بيرن هذه الاشياء لما ياخذها الفتره طويله 
كومنلي ات ويل كوز جاستريك ألسر ذان ذا ديودينال ألسر ايش الريسك فاكتور لما يكون البيشنت has a previous peptic ulcer uh, and uh, upper GI bleeding. His age is equal or more than 65 years. Uh, he taking a high dose of NSAID. If he can take a corticosteroid or he has a cardiovascular disease. طيب. If the doctor plan to give this patient uh, NSAID, he must to give him also a prophylactic, uh, a prophylactic uh, BBI or he will lower the dose or replace it with uh, acetaminophen. The third type, it is a stress-induced ulceration. Usually, if a scenario, if a scenario, راح يقول لكم إن كان في the ICU, uh, he is on mechanical ventilation, he is taking anticoagulant, uh, he has a multi-organ failure, septicemia, um, so as can in the severe surgery or or can with trauma. In the scenario, قال لك إن صار له trauma. He has uh, a CNS injury or burn that is uh, involved more than 35% of the body surface. The ex- exact mechanism is unknown, but um, this ulcer, they found it commonly affect the fundus of the stomach. The patient will be painless upper GI bleeding. So if the doctor is um, planned to, to put the patient, for example, uh, on a mechanical ventilation, he must give the patient prophylaxis. The BBI is uh, most potent, but uh, more likely to cause pneumonia, while the histamine uh, blocker is less potent, but less likely to cause pneumonia. So what do you think the answer now? So excellent, because uh, our patient, he had a car accident. He is on mechanical ventilation. He is in ICU due to intracranial uh, hemorrhage. So uh, the answer is A. سؤال الخامس A 45 years old patient presented with a low grade fever, weight loss and watery diarrhea. Examination reveal abdominal tenderness and mass. The doctor decided to do uh, colonoscopy. The result showed non-caseating granulomas and transmural inflammation of the colon. What is the diagnosis? Okay, so now we will move to the inflammatory bowel diseases. First, we will start with the clinical differentiation between the Crohn disease and the ulcerative colitis. أول شيء راح نفرق بينهم بالمكان. The Crohn disease it will affect any part of the GI tract from the mouth to the anus. And as you can see here in this picture, it is a skip lesion in any part of the GI tract. And um, 40% of them it will affect the ileocecal part. While in the ulcerative colitis, it is isolated uh, to the large bowel and always involve the rectum. طيب. Because the ulcerative is always involved the rectum, so commonly the patient will come with uh, tenesmus. What does tenesmus mean? He feel want to defecate even if his bowel is empty. So tenesmus is more common uh, in patients with ulcerative. Why? Because uh, there is rectum uh, involvement more than the Crohn disease. طيب. The rectal bleeding is uh, very common in ulcerative. Uh, diarrhea, it, it will present in both. How, however, the character of the diarrhea and Crohn disease, it is mostly watery diarrhea in a large volume. And also the patient will have um, a weight loss because uh, he, uh, he, he have a diarrhea for... for uh, for a large volume. And also, as I said, uh, Crohn disease, it is uh, a skip lesion, so it might affect any part of the GI tract. If it is affect the small intestine, the mineral and vitamins will be the absorption here. So it will be a deficiency in the vitamins and minerals. Okay, in the ulcerative colitis, it is a small volume, and he will complain of a bloody diarrhea. And it is frequent and the mucus. طيب, the abdominal pain and fever is more commonly in a Crohn disease. In the smoking, they found that ulcerative colitis, um, smoking is a protective uh, factor in ulcerative, while it is increased, uh, it will, يعني, الناس اللي يدخنون راح يكونون أعلى في الكرون so in كرون more common in smoker في الكرون disease however ulcerative colitis it is considered as a protective factor 
Uh, another protective factor in ulcerative colitis is the appendectomy. طيب في الاكسترا انتستنال مانيفستيشن اللي ابيكم تعرفونه هنا انه وي هاف مانيفستيشنز ذات اسوشيتد وذ ذا اكتيفيتي وذ ذا ديزيز اكتيفيتي اند اذر مانيفستيشن ان ريليتد تو ذا ديزيز اكتيفيتي لايك هير all the symptoms of the eye which is abscleritis uh, conjunctivitis iritis it is uh, it is associated with the disease activity except the uveitis okay also the mouth ulcer uh, if the patient present with erythema nodosum and uh, bioderma gangrenosum and you have to know that the erythema nodosum um, its location is in the shin of the leg And uh, the bioderma gangrenosum, uh, it has a gangrenous cell as a characteristic feature. For the, uh, for the symptoms that is unrelated to the inflammatory bowel disease activity, uh, we have like uh, primary sclerosing cholangitis and cholangiocarcinoma, and it is mainly uh, happened with patient who has ulcerative colitis and the sacroiliitis and ankylosing spondylitis is coming with patient with a Crohn. هذا الجدول راح يوضح لكم all the intestinal, extra intestinal manifestations uh, مع ال percentage in each uh, disease. Okay, for the investigation, first of all, we will start with the initial studies. We have uh, the stool culture to rule out uh, the infectious diarrhea. Uh, also, we can do a fecal leukocyte. So the white blood cell will be elevated in ulcerative colitis, ischemic colitis, and infectious diarrhea. طيب في uh, other um, features or investigation نقدر نستعملها to differentiate between the Crohn disease and ulcerative. عندنا the endoscopic feature في the Crohn راح يكون عندنا segmental inflammation. Okay, there will be aphthous ulcer and cobblestone appearance. While in the ulcerative colitis, it is a continuous diffuse inflammation. Uh, there will be erythema and normal uh, loss of normal vascular pattern. For the histological feature, for the Crohn disease, راح يكون transmural distribution with skip lesion. ولأن transmural إن affect all layers. Uh, patient with the Crohn راح يكون معهم the fissure and the fistula and the structure more common than the ulcerative colitis. Also, in these patients, راح يكون عندهم non-caseating granuloma. Uh, for ulcerative colitis, it will be mucosal distribution, a continuous disease. Um, هنا راح uh, هنا قلنا الجلاند intact في الكرون disease. لكن في الالت في الالسريتيف راح يكون في gland disruption, crypt distortion, cryptitis, crypt abscess, and loss of goblet cell. So this also uh, a characteristic feature for the ulcerative colitis uh, in the histological in histology. Okay. Uh, for the radiological feature, the Crohn disease راح يكون في um, cobblestone appearance. نفس هذا X-ray راح يكون في string sign, as you can see here when you do an abdominal X-ray. Also, if you do a barium follow through, there will be a rose uh, thorn ulcer. And the structure, as I said, is more common in Crohn. Uh, for the ulcerative colitis, uh, there is a lack of uh, host stress, especially if the patient come with toxic megacolon. And the structure here is uh, rare. So can you answer the question now? So excellent. It is a direct question. Uh, the answer is A, because... Um, Uh, the patient is uh, complaining of weight loss and watery diarrhea. As I said, this is more common with the Crohn disease. Also, uh, the result of uh, clonoscopy showing non-caseating granuloma and transmural inflammation. Okay. Uh, so Alice said this, a 50 years old patient presented with the lower abdominal cramps, tenesmus, and bloody diarrhea four times a day. The patient is alert and oriented, and on examination, her pulse is uh, 67, has a blood pressure um, 127 over 70, and his temperature is 37. Uh, 
Um, the rectal examination is nil of note. The doctor did clonoscopy and found erosion extended to the splenic flexure. What is the management? Can you answer? Okay. So we discuss um, about the, uh, the clinical manifestation, the extra manifestation, and uh, how we diagnose a patient with ulcerative and Crohn's disease. So now we, we uh, move to the management. So the management of ulcerative colitis is depend on the severity of the disease and uh, the extension. So if it is only involved the rectum, we call it uh, proctitis, we will give the patient topical uh, five aza, and it has another name, uh, mesilamine. Either we, t we will give it to the patient either as a suppository or enema. However, if it is uh, come in the question, uh, one of the choice is suppository and the other one is enema, choose the enema because it is commonly used and it is more effective. Will reach Hagaikun Afuvel. If the uh, disease is extend to the left side, so it is extend to the splenic flexure, give the patient topical and oral mesilamine. If the topical and oral 5 aza is not uh, is not helpful, we can give the patient oral steroid. If the patient is not respond to all of these and he present with us in a severe stage of the disease. And how we know that uh, this patient is in, in the severe stage, if there is a systematic manifestation, mean he has fever, uh, his blood pressure is elevated, he has a bloody diarrhea more than six to seven time per hours, he has a toxic megacolon, or he present to us with extra intestinal manifestation like arthritis or arthralgia. So we will give him IV steroid directly. Uh, if, the, if there is no response, we will add IV infliximab, infliximab. and um, after that, for the, to maintain the remission, uh, we, will, we will withdraw the steroid and we will add to the IV infliximab the azathioprin and uh, 6 uh, mercatoprin. Okay? If all of these are not uh, helpful, we will uh, move to the colectomy. For patients with the Crohn's disease, first of all, we will start with the budesonide, which is an oral steroid. Uh, if it is a mild disease and only if affect, affect the ileum and the, the right colon. Uh, if it is severe and affected the left side, we will give him a systematic steroid. And to maintain the remission, we will move to the biologic and uh, thioprin. If the patient is present to us with a complication, as you know that the fistula, it has uh, two parts, either medical management or surgical management. The medical management, the first line is uh, we will give him antibiotic, metronidazole. If, it is, if the patient is not uh, responding or um, he has a refractory fistula, we will give him infliximab. وشفت في التجميعات سؤال كذا لكن ما كانوا ذاكرين الانتيبيوتيك فموجود من ضمن الخيارات only infliximab فخلاص اختاروا infliximab but can you answer the question now okay must of, must uh, أكثركم جواب السؤال الجواب دي هو الصح طيب ليه لأن البيشنت عنده uh, تنزمس and bloody diarrhea هذول الاثنين يقولون أنه عنده ulcerative colitis قلنا تنزمس is mainly if the rectum is involved, with ulcerative colitis is always involved the rectum. The bloody diarrhea more common coming with the, um, with the ulcerative colitis. طيب هل هو سفير ولا لا؟ إحنا قلنا نقول عنه سفير إذا كان البلدي ديارية أكثر من ستة وفوق. فهنا four times. His his pulse, the temperature, the blood pressure, all of them are normal. وما عنده fever, so we cannot consider this patient. As a severe case, برضو في ال في الكولونوسكوبي قال لك إنه extend to the splenic flexure. يعني راح نعطيه topical و oral. So D is the is the right answer. Okay. سؤال السابع. A patient with Crohn's disease had persistent symptoms despite the medical management. The doctor did segmental resection of terminal ileum. After years, the patient present 
connected with loss of vibratory sensation and numbness. What, cause, what causes this condition? Okay, so we finished from the management, so now we will go to the complication. The complication غالباً تكون يعني متشابهة بين Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. The fistula, when there is a fistula between the intestine and any other part like with the vagina or with the skin, it's more common in ulcerative and uh, sorry in Crohn more than ulcerative because the Crohn we said it is a transmural lesion. Anorectal diseases like fissure, abscess, perianal fistula, all of them also is more common in Crohn disease. Um, the patient might present with a small bowel obstruction. He might have a malabsorption of vitamin B12 and bile acid and both of them are occur in terminal ileum. Uh, also he might uh, present with col uh, cholelithiasis and nephrolithiasis, aphthous ulcer of the lips, growth re retardation and any other psychosocial uh, complications. So in this schedule uh, it showed you the um, vitamins a site of absorption and what happen if there is um, a deficiency. So uh, the B12, the site of absorption is in the ileum and if it is um, decreased or there is a problem with, with the absorption, the patient will present with uh, a neuropathy symptoms. So if ulcerative uh, complications, it is, a, it is collected in ulcerative colitis uh, world um, the liver problems is more common here, especially the primary sclerosing cholangitis and cholangiocarcinoma. Also, also in ulcerative colitis, patients have a greater risk of colorectal cancer, and uh, the patient might present with toxic megacolon. Uh, if we did an abdominal X-ray and we found that the transverse colon diameter is more than uh, six centimeters. So can you answer the question now? So excellent, most of you answer, uh, answer it correctly, which is uh, C. طيب, let's imagine that in the scenario, in, uh, the doctor did a resection for all the small bowel. And after years, the patient presented with loss of vibratory sensation and numbness. What will be the, uh, the answer now? Yes, excellent. The same answer. So if we remove all the small bowel, so most of the vitamins is uh, uh, راح راح إذا هو مثلاً vitamin B12 ولا folic acid اللي هو duration. The vitamin B12 uh, it's stored in our body in a large amount. So it will take time from three to five years uh, for the um, symptoms to appear. However, if, this, if the scenario is said that the doctor did a resection for the small bowel and uh, after weeks, two months, the patient presented with loss of vibratory sensation and numbness, now think about the folic acid. So the duration of the symptoms is determined that we choose B or C. Okay. Sual Salman, a 48-year-old lorry driver who presents to you with a history of heartburn after meals. He is on a 40 milligram per day of PPI for eight weeks, but it did not relieve his symptoms. The doctor did endoscopy for him and it showed normal result. What is the best next step? What do you think the answer? Okay. Guess um, esophageal... Um, Gastric esophageal reflux disease. In etiology, if there is inappropriate relaxation of the lower sphincter, and this is the most common cause. But if the tone of the lower esophagus uh, sphincter is uh, low, especially in some diseases like uh, scleroderma, and there is other contributing factors, like if the patient is obese in a pregnant woman, uh, if the patient has um, a zollinger olson syndrome and hiatal hernia. So what, what are the signs and symptoms of uh, this disease? Uh, we can divide it into esophageal or non-esophageal. The esophageal one, uh, the typical symptoms is heartburn, acid regurgitation. The atypical one is chest pain. 
uh, dysphagia and uh, odinophagia. For the non-esophageal symptoms, respiratory like chronic cough, wheezing, aspiration, and pneumonia. For the non-respiratory, uh, like uh, sore throat, hoarseness, and dental uh, erosion. Also, uh, they maybe they mention in the um, they will mention in the scenario that uh, the symptoms is reduced if the patient is stand or sit uh, or when he use uh, antacid. So all of these are uh, characteristic for uh, esophageal reflux disease. How we investigate the gastric esophageal reflux disease? Uh, it is a clinical diagnosis. We give the patient a trial of PPI, and if the symptoms is uh, relieved, uh, this confirms that the patient uh, has gastroesophageal reflux disease. However, uh, if they mention in the scenario any one of these red flags, you have to do endoscopy directly. If the patient um, has uh, a new onset of dyspepsia in patient more than or equal to 60 years old, Evidence, evidence of gastrointestinal bleeding like uh, hematemesis, melina, uh, and so on, iron deficiency, anemia, anorexia, or unexplained weight loss, dysphagia or adenophagia, persistent vomiting, and uh, gastrointestinal cancer in a first degree relative. So if the patient come with any of these uh, red flags, you will do endoscopy directly, not the clinical diagnosis. So for the treatment, you will uh, ask the patient to avoid alcohol, coffee, spices, as we said. If he is obese, uh, advise him to lose weight. Uh, start start uh, giving him BBI until you reach the maximum dose, which is um, 40 milligram once daily or 20 milligram twice daily. If BBI is not effective, you can give him a histamine antagonist. Fee, uh, two cases. موجودة كثير بالتجميعات إذا مثلا you give أعطيت uh, البيشنت 20 ملغرام per day uh, of PPI and his symptoms was controlled but the, doc- but the patient he is stopped uh, his medication and after for example 3 months his symptoms back again so what you will do in this um, in this scenario you will resume the same dose okay but if you give the patient the same dose 20 milligram per day, but his symptoms from the beginning, from the beginning, it wasn't controlled. So you will increase the dose. If you give the patient the treatment, but he is not uh, response, and he has a refractory gastroesophageal reflux disease. So what you will do, the refractory gastroesophageal reflux disease is considered as a one of the red flag uh, um, sign. So you will do endoscopy if it is normal so that uh, confirm that the patient does not have esophageal cancer. So you will do a 24-hour pH monitoring to confirm uh, that the cause is gastroesophageal reflux disease. But if the endoscopy showed that the patient has reflux esophagitis, so this uh, confirmed that he has gastroesophageal reflux disease. So you will uh, proceed to nascent fund duplication because the patient is not responding to the, to the medication. But first, you have to rule out the motility disorder. So you will do the manometry. If the manometry is normal, proceed with nascent fund duplication. So can you answer the question now? So excellent. The, the answer is D because um, the patient is present with uh, symptoms of uh, gastroesophageal reflux. He is on BBI, but uh, it did not relieve his symptoms. So the doctor do endoscopy and it showed normal result. So after that, you have to do 24 uh, hour pH monitoring study. Okay, so al a 60 year old smoker male presented with chronic history of gastroesophageal reflux disease for several years. He is complaining of heartburn and uh, regurgitation. A histopathological specimen taken by upper GI endoscopy showing esophagus with intestinal metabolasia. What is the diagnosis? So uh, the complication of gastroesophageal reflux disease, either the patient will have stricture, um, it's like a scar, or he has uh, 
he present with esophagitis, ulcer, bleeding, or barrett esophagus and esophageal adenocarcinoma. And it is more common in uh, male who is, um, it's more common in male who is uh, age is more than uh, 50 years old. Uh, if he is a smoker, Caucasian, overweight, and uh, he is complaining of hiatus hernia, and he has a long history of reflux symptoms. And barrett of esophagus, it is an intestinal um, uh, mucosal cell. It is uh, from the squamous cell to the columnar cell. And we will do a gastroscopy as recommended if the patient has a chronic uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease and he has the symptoms of anorexia, weight loss, bleeding, and dysphagia. For the treatment, if the patient presents to, uh, to us with a barrett esophagus, we will give him acid suppressive therapy with a high dose of PPI and surveillance um, with the gastroscopy every three years if there is no dysplasia. But if the patient has dysplasia, we either give him, um, we, we, we will classify him into high grade and low grade. If he is high, uh, in a high grade dysplasia, we will directly go to the esophagectomy. Uh, in a low grade uh, dysplasia, um, we will give him BBI and surveillance. Uh, and recently they recommend the endoscopic ablation or resection. So can you answer the question now? So the answer here is A, because the GI endoscopy showing esophagus with intestinal metabolism. So um, a six years old uh, girl admitted to the hospital with a history of abdominal bloating, pain, diarrhea, and weight loss. She lost five kilograms in the last two months. Her family realized that their child is fatigued and does not play as before. The test results show positive uh, IgA endomesial antibodies and IgA anti-tissue transglutaminase antibodies. Biopsy shows villus atrophy. What to do next? Okay, so celiac, uh, celiac disease is abnormal small intestine mucosa due to intestinal reaction to gluten. The clinical feature, uh, the patient might present with diarrhea, weight loss, anemia, symptoms of vitamin and mineral deficiencies, uh, failure to thrive, more common, uh, presentation is bloating, gas, and iron deficiency. If the celiac disease affects the proximal bowel, uh, the patient will um, mainly present with uh, vitamins and mineral deficiency. If there is gluten in, uh, enteropathy, the patient it is associated with um, dermatitis, uh, herbitoform, herbitoform skin eruption, uh, epilepsy, myopathy, depression, paranoia, and so on and also fracture because there is a metabolic uh, bone disease. So how we investigate the patient with celiac disease? We will measure the tissue transglutaminase, IgA, and also the amount of IgA itself because uh, if the patient has uh, a negative uh, tissue transglutaminase, IgA, we don't know uh, this is due to IgA deficiency or not. So if, if the patient has positive tissue transglutaminase IgA, we will do biopsy to confirm that. If it is positive, this is a celiac disease. If it is negative, so uh, the patient uh, does not have a celiac disease. If, if the tissue transglutaminase um, IgA is negative and he has a low amount of IgA, so we don't know this low amount of IgA is due to deficiency or not, so we will measure the tissue transglutaminase IgG. And this, if it is positive, we will do biopsy uh, to confirm. If it is positive, the patient has celiac disease. Another thing, if the patient has negative tissue transglutaminase IgA and the IgA is positive, so the patient does not have deficiency in IgA, we do not need to measure the IgG. So directly the patient does not have uh, celiac disease. Um, we do the biopsy, especially for the duodenum. Uh, we will find that there is increase in the intraepithelial lymphocyte, crypt hyperplasia, and villus atrophy. For the treatment, we um, advise the patient uh, for gluten-free diet. Um, and the gluten is found in a pro uh, word, barley, rye, oat, and wheat. Rice and corn are acceptable 
and we can give him uh, supplementation like iron and folate because we said that there is a deficiency in, in a lot of vitamins and mineral, minerals in these patients. For the follow-up, uh, we do not need to do an invasive um, investigation. So the follow-up is by the assessment of the symptoms, uh, the patient weight, the nutritional status. Also, we will take a blood to test uh, the tissue transglutaminase and uh, endomesial uh, antibodies. So back to the question. Excellent. The answer is A. Some of you answer B. B is wrong because um, we said we cannot do the follow-up with the biopsy. We will follow up the patient with uh, assessing the symptoms and uh, the blood to, uh, to measure the tissue transglutaminase and anti-endomesial antibodies. So B is uh, wrong. The answer is A. So this is the last question. These are my references and thank you. Inshallah, you will too. Can you repeat about the duration again, please, of the folic acid and B12? قلنا إذا جانا في السؤال إنهم سووا ريسكشن للسمول باول ما حددوا لي سيجمنت معينة فكذا راح يكون البيشنت عنده ديفيشنسي في أغلب المينرالز واللي تسوي لي نيوروباثية أما الفوليك أسيد أو البي 12 طيب كيف نفرق كيف نعرف إذا هذه النيوروباثي سيمتومز إذا ديو تو فوليك أسيد ديفيشنسي أو بي 12 ديفيشنسي من الديوريشن أوف ذي سيمتومز إذا قال لك ظهرت لنا نيوروباثي سيمتومز بعد يرز من ثلاثة إلى خمسة يرز اعرفي إنها بي 12 لأن البي 12 غالبا يكون متخزن في الجسم بكميات كبيرة فعلى ما يتبين السيمتومز تاخذ وقت لكن الفوليك أسيد ما عنده مو متخزن في الجسم بكمية كبيرة فالسيمتومز حقة النيوروباثي راح تبان within weeks فعشان تفرقين إذا هي النيوروباثي هذه due to folic acid or B12 شوفي الـ duration في السؤال الـ ulcerative colitis management as we said we suggest the enema because it is more effective والـ reach حق راح يكون أفضل من الـ suppository الـ 40 ملغ هي الـ maximum dose فخلاص إذا هو ياخذ 40 ملغ وما استجاب فهو يعتبر ريفراكتوري جاسترسفيجال ريفلكس فراح تسوين اندوسكوبي راح تشوفين على حسب اذا الاندوسكوبي نورمال او في اسوفيجال ريفلكس اذا هو نورمال راح نسوي 24 اور بي اتش مونيتورنج اذا كان عنده ريفلكس اسوفيجايتس راح نسوي مانومتري تو اكسكلود الموتيليتي ديس اوردر بعدين نيسن فاند ابلكيشن للسيليك ديزيز كيف نسوي له فولو اب آه راح نسوي اسسمنت للسيمتومز وبرضو راح ناخذ من البلد ونسوي ميجرمنت للتشو ترانس جلوتامينيز والاندوميزيال 